case conundrum, I want to just just pinpoint the lozenge, the the NO lozenge. I take it every single day. Um, I suck on it. I don't know if there's a benefit to keeping it in your mouth longer. If there's a downside to chewing it and swallowing it, probably doesn't work. Um, so maybe you can talk about how it works and the how to get the most out of it. Yeah, so the, the, the N101 lozenge, I created a, a solid dose form of nitric oxide gas. Right, so nitric oxide, we have to remind ourselves, nitric oxide is a gas. It isn't a pill you can swallow. We have to, if your body can't make it, then we have to do it for you. So this ODT, or orally disintegrating tablet, I developed to have a very specific dissolution rate because I want to deliver a certain amount of nitric oxide over a certain period of time. So number one, never give the body something that it hasn't seen and at a dose that's, that's not physiological. So we know how much nitric oxide a healthy person makes in a 24-hour period through both production pathways. So what I want to do was create restorative physiology, give back the missing nitric oxide that people are missing. And this is this has been challenging because it's very simple with things like vitamin D, right? You go get a blood draw if your vitamin D is 20, you dose and you titrate till we get it to 80. It's a very simple number. You treat the number and people get better. But nitric oxide is not something you can measure in your blood. There's not a number that we're treating. It's actually delivering the same amount of nitric oxide that your body may be missing. So I designed that to have a five to six minute resident time. So you put it in your mouth, you move it around. Depending upon how active you are, it's usually you know, five to six minutes. Some people are more slow, so it dissolves much slower. But the design is to be a time release. And so we can understand the pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics of once nitric oxide is produced, where it goes, what it becomes, and how it's transported. So that was the design of the lozenge. So it's best to suck on it, let it dissolve. But if you chew it and swallow it, we've done the pharmacodynamics, pharmacokinetics of it. You still get the benefits. You're just shifting the, the pharmacokinetic curve just a little bit, but you still get the benefit. And for all of you listening, it's a supplement I take every day. You can find it at Accelerated Health Products. I take it while I'm working out in the morning. I suck on it in the beginning of my workout. Um, now, is it also affecting your oral microbiome as we're talking about the mouth? Absolutely. So the other, the other really consideration when I started contemplating a product to restore nitric oxide was number one, if your body can't make it, then we have to do it for you. But number two, I want to restore the body's ability to make it. So we understand the biochemistry and the rate limiting step that leads to nitric oxide synthase uncoupling. And so we can overcome that. So this lozenge, we're finding that within 20 minutes of putting it in your mouth, we've improved the body's ability to make nitric oxide in the lining of the blood vessels by as much as 20%. Within 20 minutes, we've already improved your body's natural ability to produce nitric oxide by 20%. And then because it sits in the mouth and the dorsal part of the tongue, we're completely changing the diversity of the microbiome because most pathogenic bacteria are sensitive to nitric oxide. Nitric oxide will bind to the iron sulfur centers of the bacteria and shut down their respiration and kill them. That's how our immune system works. But unfortunately, if you develop oral dysbiosis, you, there's no nitric oxide producing bacteria in the mouth. So now these pathogenic bugs overrun and kind of, you know, overcome the, uh, overtake the police force and now you get salivary, you get a decrease in salivary pH, you get caries causing bacteria, and you completely change the ecology. So when we put this lozenge in our mouth, we're now killing the bad guys. We're giving these bacteria, these nitrate reducing bacteria, a nitrogen pool that they can now respire on. So we wake them up, we increase their numbers and improve the diversity of the microbiome. And is there a benefit to taking more than one a day or, you know, can, can someone have too much nitric oxide in their body? It typically doesn't happen. And the only, the only scenario that we was contemplated, you know, even 30 years ago was during sepsis, right? So when patients get septic it means they have a systemic infection, their immune system are trying to fight wars on all fronts. And it was thought that the immune cells are making too much nitric oxide to get systemic vasodilation you lose perfusion pressure, you get end organ damage, and you die from it. So in the 90s, there was some randomized placebo-controlled clinical studies in septic patients giving them nitric oxide inhibitors. And the results from those clinical trials that if you gave septic patients a, a drug that inhibited the production of nitric oxide by our immune cells, they actually got worse, and it increased morbidity and mortality in the septic patients. Mm -hmm. So that told us 
I mean, septic, clearly there's a, there's hypoperfusion and loss of perfusion pressure, but nitric oxide appeared to be protective in that mechanism. So what do we look for in terms of toxicity? You look for an unsafe drop in blood pressure and you look for methemoglobinemia. So you can, you can, there's benefit from taking more than one lozenge a day, but because of the nature of nitric oxide, I designed it to be taken once in the morning, once in the evening, 12 hours apart. Then that gives you kind of your 24 hour nitric oxide support for somebody who's just interested in maintaining optimal nitric oxide levels. But in your pay, the perfect example would be your dad, for example, or people with metabolic disease, ED, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, mild cognitive impairment or dementia. They, they may need one lozenge every four to six hours because the, their metabolic demands are much different than you and I who are healthy and trying to maintain a health rather than somebody that's sick and trying to get to health. 